Uh, good evening, Your Worship and Council. I'm John Klein. I'm here representing myself. Uh, just first, i um, like to note that I think that Wascana Parkway at uh, Kramer Boulevard should be reduced to 50 kilometers an hour. Uh, the present speed is hampering ha uh, having a uh, transit stop put in near there to serve um, thousands of people potentially. And the um, bigger issue I'm here for um, is just to note that Regina is a fantastic place to be and City Council uh, wants to remind everyone, of course, that it's illegal to try to leave it by vehicle without paying for the privilege. It's a somewhat bold strategy to grow Regina by keeping it illegal to hitchhike away from the Queen City or offer to take anyone with you if you're making an escape. But I'm sure the councillors in favour of the bylaw have thought it through thoroughly. Fortunately, the closest hitchhiker-friendly municipalities are sufficiently far from the Queen City that wants a hitchhiker travelling across the country by the nationally famous Trans-Canada Highway disembarks here. They'll have to hire a bus or a licensed cab to get out. It would take over 12 hours to walk to Moose Jaw if you were likely to attempt it. It would be almost pointless anyway since Moose Jaw has the same sort of amazing bylaw. Facing this legal and financial quandary, the traveler will more than likely opt to settle here thus boosting our tax base. <laughs> Following the example set out in our city's bylaws, should I see a distressed person at the side of the road in Regina, I'll be certain to drive past them, lest they misinterpret my slowing down as an enticement to enter my vehicle. <laughs> Such a misplaced deed could cost me $110 under the proposed change, and the attempted hitchhiker $110 too. Seeing too that soliciting business from a vehicle <clears throat> is illegal, I'll give those apparently nefarious food trucks on the plaza downtown a wide berth this summer. I'll report any rogue car wash fundraisers at schools to the appropriate authorities. I must really congratulate the City Council for preparing for a high-tech ride-sharing services that have become popular in many cities, notably Uber and Lyft. With these updated fines, everyone should get the clear message that Regina's closed to high-tech ride services right down to the low-tech thumbing of rides. By the time we catch up to the rest of the continent, we'll be so far behind the times, we'll think we're ahead. And then switching gears now to, from a little bit of satire to something serious, I think this bylaw encourages my fellow citizens to show a lack of human decency to their fellow people. If someone is rich enough they can pay to solicit from a roadside with a large sign, they can do that. But if someone tries to hold a cardboard sign there to have enough for a bus fare or a meal, or even to oppose political incumbents, they'll be harassed by police. Some of this bylaw is in fact targeted at poor people or temporary guests in our city. It would be ridiculous for police to enforce the hitchhiking bylaw, and if they did do it, I will un it will unjustly target people poorer than you or I. I thank you. I'll take questions. Thank you, uh, Mr. Klein, for your presentation. Any questions of the delegation? Councilor Fraser. Thank you, through you, Mr. Mayor. Thanks, uh, thanks for your presentation. I have note, actually, if someone were to stay here and check in, that I actually have to buy a house before we start to pay property tax. Um, you mentioned 50 kilometers an hour in West Canada. Could you just explain what you're talking about? Well, right at uh, Kramer Boulevard and University Drive. It's at 70 kilometers an hour, which is probably unsafe for the hundreds of pedestrians that are there every day. And I'm also being told by the city administration <coughs> that they're having difficulty getting a bus stop there on Wascana Parkway approved, despite there being other bus stops on Wascana Parkway, because in part of the speed of the um, Wascana Parkway, which doesn't seem safe for the pedestrians crossing there, which I do every day too. Okay. And so your suggestion would be 50 right from Broad Street Bridge South? No, 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 no. Just, just where there's intersections at uh, at the university, where there's University Drive North, University Drive South, possibly even Research Drive uh, at Grant Drive. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Councilor. Uh, Other questions on the delegation, Rice. Thank you. A lot of presentations seem to focus on hitchhiking. Do you not think there's safety concerns with hitchhiking, and that's why bylaws are in place to keep people off the side of busy roads and um, people from pulling over to keep people safe so accidents don't happen? Um, 
I think that it's necessary at times to pull over at the side of any highway. And uh, there are actually laws, in fact, to have people slow down to 60 kilometers an hour when there's a tow truck or a police on the side of the road. Perhaps it should just be extended to when there's anybody at the side of the road to increase safety for everybody. You don't think there's a difference between a tow truck or a police car or ambulance and a hitchhiker? Uh, I didn't say hitchhiker, but people pulling over in vehicles, it would be wide, wise to give everybody a, a wide berth at a slower speed if possible. Um, as far as picking up hitchhikers, uh, I don't see a big problem with it, actually. Um, I, I think also it would make sense to create a law that uh, is going to be unjustly enforced. I can't see them setting up a sting to uh, pick off hitchhikers or, or people picking up hitchhikers, whereas I can see it being used maybe inappropriately <coughs> to harass people that are poor. Thank you for your presentation. Thank you, Council Price. Um, another question for delegation. Thank you. You can return to the 